Hello everyone. Here is an interesting story. A foreign tourist was traveling around China with the help of a guide. One day they happened to pass by a cemetery where a burial was taking place. The traveler wanted to look at the local custom. So he bought some flowers to show his respect for the dead and they both went to the burial place. After the burial the tourist noticed the Chinese were leaving some food items for the dead. He said to his guide, "Is it not ridiculous to leave food at the grave of the dead? Is it not a waste of food? When do you think the dead will get up and eat it?" The Chinese man smiled and replied, "I guess he will eat it when he gets up to smell the flowers you brought." Friends, There are many things in life that remain a mystery including traditions and faith practices. One of the main theological issues that has divided Christianity is the belief by some Christians that the Holy Eucharist is in essence the body and blood of Christ. There are three communion traditions of the faith. One, the Orthodox churches including the Roman Catholic Church believe The bread and wine offered at the altar become the body and blood of Christ through transubstantiation. These churches believe that when a priest extends his hands over the gifts of bread and wine and calls down the Holy Spirit, they mysteriously change into the actual body and blood of Christ. The Lutheran Christians believe in consubstantiation. This belief arose out of the Protestant Reformation initiated by theologians, churchmen and statesmen in the 16th century. They believe that Jesus is with in and under the bread and wine, but they do not literally change into the body and blood of Christ. The reformed churches such as the Presbyterian, the Baptist and others perform the communion service as a memorial based on the words of Jesus at the last supper do this in memory of me they believe that they are called upon to remember only what god has done at the last supper they do not believe that the bread and wine used at the service actually changes into the body and blood of christ the anglican churches comprising the church of england and the episcopal churches hold either views Some believe in transubstantiation and some believe that it is just a symbol or memorial. Friends, different interpretations of the scriptures by different people have led to a different understanding and practice of communion. According to the Catholic faith, we believe in the real presence of Christ in the bread and wine based on Christ's teaching in the scriptures and in the tradition of the church. We believe that our Lord Jesus Christ on the night before he suffered on the cross shared one last meal with his disciples. During the meal he instituted the holy eucharist and changed the bread and wine into his body and blood when he took some bread blessed broke it and gave it to his disciples and said Take and eat this is my body. In the same way he gave the wine to his disciples and said Drink it For this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus has also said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world. Unless you eat the flesh and drink the blood of the son of man, you will not have life in you. Friends, Today's second reading from the letter to the Hebrews also provides an explanation for our belief. Writing to the Jews converted to the Christian faith in the early community, the writer took them back to the Old Testament sacrificial rite, which foreshadowed Jesus' sacrifice and then showed them how Jesus fulfilled the rite. The ancient Israelites believed that the blood of sacrificial animals and birds offered by the priests on behalf of the people made them clean or holy before God all the people offered these ritual sacrifices for the expiation of sins 
in accord with the law which God handed down through Moses. However, such sacrifices just stayed as rituals and never brought any spiritual satisfaction or any change in a person's life. But the writer said that they expected greater things from the coming of the Messiah. Yes, Christ, the Messiah, came as the high priest, and he sacrificed neither animals nor birds as the priests of the Old Testament did, but rather he offered his own body and blood, and the manner of the sacrifice was spiritual too, for it took place through the Holy Spirit. It is believed that even though the body and blood of Christ in the form of bread and wine are visible like any other material offerings at the hands of the priests, Jesus' offering of himself in mind and heart to God was imperceptible and inconspicuous and therefore was invisible to human beings. So the real presence of Jesus in the bread and wine will stay a mystery. Nevertheless, all the saints have also affirmed Christ's presence in the Eucharist and found nourishment in it on their journey towards perfection. Friends, despite all the explanation and our faith, all of us may still struggle to understand and explain to others how the changes take place, how the bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ and how his sacrifice could bring us forgiveness for our sins. Hence, we do not have to debate and argue with non-Christians, non-Catholics and unbelievers regarding our faith in this mystery. Let us respect those who honestly tell us what they can believe and what they cannot and why. However, there are certain things that we Catholic believers have to do so as to receive all the spiritual blessings and benefits that flow from his sacrifice. 1. Let us always gather in remembrance of Jesus, who gave his life for our salvation and commanded us to celebrate this gift in his memory, for he has given his life not just for the sins of the people of his time, but for the sins of all mankind. 2. Let us truly acknowledge and believe that the bread and wine are Christ's true body and blood. 3. Let us always come forward to receive the body and blood of Christ with reverence, penitent hearts and gratitude for the magnificent gift. 4. Let us pray that the body and blood that we consume may purify our mind from sinful deeds and make us all holy and give us the strength to be faithful to the covenant we make with God and hold fast to everything that Jesus has said and done for us. Amen. God bless you.